Oh, wow. Welcome to Dog Star. We are Sun Dogs, and this week we have the pleasure of sitting down with a legend. <laughs> Half. How you doing? Appreciate it, man. Thank, thank y'all for having me. Feeling good. I'm feeling good. How are y'all feeling? Feeling, feeling good. Busy, but that's the way we like it. Yeah. Oh, thanks yeah. for taking the time to for sure come through, talk with us, talk to fans. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a peek behind the the mastermind. Exactly. For sure, yeah. yeah. First things first, we want to get the origin story. So from the, you know, uh, moment of conception up until <laughs> now, you're a oh, record producer, engineer extraordinaire. Right. Uh, multi-hyphenate. Songwriter. Yeah, definitely uh, multi-hyphenate. Artist yourself, performing at shows. Um, But yeah, what's so the flashback? Yeah, did you? Yeah, if we got to go all the way back, man, like we could go all the way back to, uh, I think... I have this like vague memory of me being like maybe six or seven years old, and like my brothers, um, we had the uh, the talk boy from uh, Home Alone. If you guys remember that, from oh the yep. toy, uh, yeah, 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 with the microphone, you can kind of like distort your voice mm-hmm. and all that. Like we were um, we were in his room and we were kind of just passing it around and just rhyming mm-hmm. on the mic. It was like a cipher. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what the heck I was talking about. Yeah. I wish that we still had the tape. It's somewhere, but um, <laughs> that, that's like my earliest memory. Just like as a kid, I think. Uh, at the time, I had like a stupid rap name that we won't even say, but um, oh, we'll um get it it's like here. that probably was my earliest memory, man. Just like being a kid, just freestyling with my brothers. And, That's awesome. you know, they, my brothers have a huge influence on me. So it's like that that definitely was a moment where I was like, OK, maybe, uh, you know, maybe I could do something with this, you know, yeah. because, you know, when you have when you have that type of support system from your family, man, you kind of just. You kind of just got to ride with it. You got to rock with it. So ever since then, it's like, what, six, seven years old? I've just been doing it, listening to music, you know, um, doing my research. And just it's it's been an, on, it's been an ongoing process since then. But that yeah. was like my earliest memory, man. Six yeah, years, musical. Six, seven years old, just freestyling. Wow. Musical siblings or siblings that are into music. I got to ask, were your parents uh, doing music or uh, like grandma? Or man, my, my, my dad, from what I was told, uh, he was like a, he was a singer. Okay. Um, he played he played different instruments. I think he played a piano, um, possibly possibly guitar. I'm not quite sure, mm-hmm. but I know that my uncle, he definitely was in a band back in the day. Um he he's he's got some fun stories of, you know, the the club scene back in the day doing shows and open up for uh some big time artists. But there's definitely some people in my family that um, you know, have been musically inclined, you know, doing their own thing as far as music goes and I kind of, I guess it just kind of came. It just flowed down from them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got it from my brothers. And, you know, I, I just kind of took it upon myself to kind of kind of carve and pave my own way for myself. So, yeah. yeah. Um, did How long has your family been in Minnesota for? Is uh, oh. your aunts and uncles doing, uh, or your uncles you were talking about doing music in Minnesota? Like those bands would have been? My family has been in, I mean, I can't tell you how long they've been in, but, I mean, I know that my uncle's been... I, I I can't really give like an exact date because yeah, obviously it's before my time. Right, right. Oh, okay, like, so. I know I, I just know the stories. He was rocking shows. I, I wish I knew the name of it, but um, I feel like I feel like there was a time where he opened up for Prince. Whoa. I think. Wow. So yeah, like we're, we're talking like back in that time. Yeah, but, perfect. Yeah, it, it, it was a short lived band, but I mean he still hey. got some cool stories. So hey. shout out my uncle Jay. Yeah. What were some of the artists that started to influence you, even around five or six? Whether you you said your brothers were really influencing you, what man, were they listening to that you wanted to were, listen to? They were putting me on to so much music, man. They would um they would go to like Sam Goody, they would go to like Electric Fetus, um like all the record stores, all the music spots you could think of. And uh, I mean, we're talking about bringing home music like you know Wu Tang, mm. um, you know Pete Rock, CL Smooth, Diamond D. Um, De La Soul was heavy, yes. um, Tribe Called Quest, um, man, The Far Side, that was definitely like, uh, a, a group who, you know, I love, but mainly it was just like De La Soul and Tribe, like, those are the two groups that I just felt like, man, the music that they were making was just so crazy, and that was like what I gravitated towards, like, at, at that time, so, mm. that was some of the artists that they were kind of, you know, putting me onto at an early age, so... So yeah, you were freestyling into the Home Alone <laughs> Sony thing. Yeah, when did yeah, you yeah. start uh, doing beats or making beats? Man, at the age of ten, 
Oh, oh really yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, my brother, uh, AP Lit Class, um, man, he put me on at like 10 years old to the MTV Music Generator. Oh, I don't know uh, if you guys okay, remember that. Okay. Like PlayStation or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. PlayStation. They had uh, they had two different versions. Um, I think it came out in like 1999 or something like that. But like, come on, man. PS1, the, the original mm, gray box. The gray one. Yeah, yeah. The, the gray one. <laughs> no it was analog like a, sticks. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a double disc uh, game. And man, I just remember making hella, like just making tons of beats on it just all day. And he would kind of tell me, you know, you got to do it like this. You know, he was kind of teaching me. And that then kind of like gravitated towards FL Studio. Okay. So okay. like it went from MTV, you know, stupid stuff to like, okay, let's actually get into something that's more legit. Mm -hmm. And at the time it was called Fruity Loops. I think now it's called FL Studio. But I mean, man, ever since then, it's like he kind of put me under his wing and just was like, hey, I'm just going to show you the ropes. And wow. I want to say that was probably like when I was like 12-ish, 13, I probably got really into FL Studio and just okay. he showed me the ropes and I just took it from there and just kind of was doing my own thing, just like making beats and going to middle school and like selling CDs of beats oh, and stuff wow. like that. Yeah. So that, that's, that's kind of like my, that's kind of like how I kind of came up into the scene, I guess you could say. It's just like, I had like my own like music CDs. I go to school and be like, hey, listen to this. Or like on the uh, on the ride to school, be like, hey, I just made a CD, tell me what you think. Just not knowing what, what could happen from it, but right. just kind of sticking with it. So. Being passionate about it. What was the producer name in the early days? Oh, my gosh, <laughs> man. Uh, I think it was just called End. Okay. <laughs> I think it was just called End. That's slick. Nice. And um, I, I got that name because I was heavily into, like, Metal Gear Solid. Um, and I think it was, it was, like, one of the bosses in there. He just had this, like, I just thought it was, like, the coolest boss. Okay. <laughs> I was okay. like, oh, I, I like this dude. So, I, I mean, I'm a kid, man. I don't know what the heck. But <laughs> right. at that time, I'm just making beats. It's like, I'm just going with something simple. I didn't want to have, like, an elaborate type of name, right. something like, you know, just keep it short and simple. And do you still have any of those CDs or any of those oh, files? I do. Oh, I do. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, I got like a whole stack because like, you know, back in the day, we would just burn beats to CDs and, you know, we would just go grab, you know, grab a hundred disc CDs from Walgreens or yeah. whichever, just bring them home, just burn the music onto the CDs. And, you know, I, I'd like sign them. I, I'd act like I was somebody and I would like sign them or. Would you um, like design artwork on the CD itself? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did all that stupid stuff, man. Just thinking that like, hopefully one day it's going to pop. You know, one, one yeah. day something could happen. So I, I just, I kept all that stuff because it's like, you never know. You, you right. never know. Maybe one day I just, maybe one day I blow up. You know, hopefully God willing, it's like I blow up. And it's like, I still have that stuff that I could like listen to and look back and be like, man, this is where I came from, you know? Yeah. So I still got those old CDs. That's so cool. Yeah. Did any of those tracks pop off enough for someone to be like, hey, we're doing the talent show. No. I'm doing your beat. I'm going to do my mm. raps over it. No, but um, I did link with this guy, uh, Jay Dante, at the time in high school. And uh, he used to work. He actually gave me my name now. So he actually gave me the name half. Oh, wow. But we could, we could probably talk about that later. Yes, but, um, definitely. At the time, he was like rhyming. And, you know, I just like, man, he's, he's actually kind of dope. So somehow, some way, he got a hold of one of my CDs. And we just were kind of like linking from there. And he would uh, sing and rap at this church. I don't, I don't know the name of the church somewhere oh. on the north side, but he gave it to his pastor. And he was like, "Hey, I, I don't know how the conversation went, but there probably went something like, hey, you know, I know, I know this guy who makes beats, yada yada yada." He reached out to me, and I started selling him music. Whoa. So that was like my first instance of like, dang, okay, we went from doing stupid stuff on MTV Music Generator to yeah. like random stuff on LFL Studio to like, now we can actually make money with this? Like, yeah. okay, hold oh on. Let gosh. me uh, uh let me try to figure this out and like really hone <laughs> in. Like that was like my moment where I'm like, okay, if I can make music off my ideas, I'm definitely going all in. So that right. was like the moment in high school where, you know, I linked up with him and we started a group and I never looked back. I'm like, Whoa. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just keep this going for real. Before the formation of your guys' group, mm -hmm. were you doing like choir or band or anything? And, or and like in like elementary school, I played some stupid instruments. Like I, I, I played like the trumpet. Oh, um, whoa. the drum, which I love. Okay. Um, I played the drum, and I, and I played like the stand up bass, which is like oh, super random. Yeah, that's nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's like really random. But like I played those three instruments. But I, I really gravitated towards the drums for okay. real. Like I, I love the drums. 
And are you uh, musically proficient in anything currently? Nah, like, so I, I do play the keys a yeah. little bit, but, you know, I don't read music. I okay. just go off ear, and that's just kind of like how it's always been. I, yeah. I'm like, at this point, I'm just full on self-talk. You yeah, know, and wow, I just boy. go off my ear. I don't know how to read the music, but you know, I just I know what sounds good. If, if that feel, makes sense, if you can feel it, it's <laughs> yeah, it's like I just yeah. know what sounds good, so I just go with that. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And I know you said you didn't want to talk about it, but we want to talk about it. <laughs> let's uh, go ahead. So let's do previous it. Previous artist names. You said what? Or previous artist names. Previous artist names. Like your, yeah, growing up, like what were you, what was your rapper name? What was your producer name? Any groups that you were in? Because well, we love that. Well, I already gave you the name. Uh, the producer I, name. Yeah, yeah producer well, name. You had, and, mentioned, you had mentioned a rapper name even from the six-year-old days. Yeah, man. Oh, I think, I think it was, oh, man, I think it might have been like, something giant like little i don't know if it was like little giant or something i don't know it was something with giant in the word but okay my brothers will probably tell me after this is all done but <laughs> it was that name then the producer name was just in mm -hmm, and yep. then uh i got half price from my uh my guy james jay dante and then I just, I didn't like that. I just felt it was kind of corny. I'm like, mm. half, like man, uh, Full okay. price. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> double the price. Like, I, I would always kind of get those jokes where it's like, oh, half price, whatever. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to just cut the price. And it's like, I mean, my last name is Price. So, I mean, right. it, it, it went. But at the same time, you know, people always, you know, they kind of called me AP at the time, too. Mm. But then all of my brothers are AP. So, it's like, oh. we're not, we're not going to do that. <laughs> so, you know, I just stuck with half and I just was riding with that. But, I mean, then, still... What was this uh, group name? Oh, uh, the, the, the first, the first group. Yeah, so so the group name was a uh, senior class. Okay, so, okay. Honestly, if it, you know, in high school it was senior class, and then after high school it was zoo gang. So zoo gang is something with me and my uh, my homeboys. Like my, these are my brothers. So we we created that, and when when we formed that, that was when it was like super serious that that was when like i knew at that point i got to somehow take the rapping a little bit more seriously because it was all about production at first right mm -hmm. and when, when when we got to zoo gang and we formed that together you know you know my homeboy ron and drake they they both kind of you know drake was more like a manager type and ron was you know he was also an artist at the time too so we just kind of put things together and his uh his cousin is actually a big artist in chicago so okay man it it, it just it fell together perfectly yeah. and you know zoo gang is, is near and dear to my heart that, that them will always be my brothers for forever so it went from senior class to zoo gang and now it's just six dozen like six dozen is just my family like that's you know my cousins my brothers um uh, really just anybody that's been along with us for the ride for, you know, people that supported us because mm -hmm. we're, we're all we're all musically, you know, inclined and talented. Yeah. Like my brother, uh, Anthony, he's a DJ in North Dakota. So he does he does shows almost like every week, every weekend. You know, wow. he's traveling, you know, he's doing shows out in Fargo and he's meeting a lot of big time artists. And, you know, my brother Aaron, you know, he's a he's an artist out here in the city, too. So we're, we're all and even my older brother, Leon, like we're we're all like talented in some way, say performance, like a lot of my, I would say rhyming abilities, I kind of picked up on from them, you know, mm. going back to when we were kids, it's like, we all would just, we all would just rap. We always mm. would have these like challenges where it's like, you know, you gotta go like, you know, two minutes without saying a certain word or, yeah. you know, just little stuff like that where we would just challenge ourselves. So we always, you know, we always did that. But yeah, pushing each other to be better, whether you knew it or not. Yeah, yeah, to this day, like you always gotta have that support system, man, and my, my brothers, they, they definitely supported me like all the way. So, and sure. was that professional switch uh, still during high school or after high school? No, that professional switch was definitely in high school because I was traveling out to Madison, uh, uh, UW, University of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And um, I would just go back and forth with uh, Jay Dante, and you know we would just have these like sessions where we would just lock in. Sick. We would make beats, and you know he would um he would give them to his guy who uh, Rafael Casal. Man, shout out to him. He's like a he's doing his thing right now. He was kind of like our mentor at the time at UW because Whoa. I think University of Wisconsin has this uh, arts program where it's for you know people who 
you know, do poetry or mm. rhyme, rapping and different. I, I don't know the I don't know the specific name of the degree, but you can get a degree that's just in like art. Wow. And it was like at that time, it was one of the only schools in the nation that offered that program. OK, so I would just always go back and forth out there, pick up game from him and Ralph and. We would just lock in and just, you know, just go crazy, do okay. shows. Um, you know, we would just lock in and make beats, do albums. Like our first project that we put out together was, ah, oh, man, I want to say maybe like 2009. Oh yeah, gosh, like that was like the okay. first project we put out. And it was like, it, it was just dope to have, you know, music on the radio in like San Francisco and just have music on the radio in uh on the campus yeah that's like my first real moment where like <laughs> we would walk around and be like hey half and i would be like dang this is crazy like yeah. people kind of just know who i am like that's so it's, it's just like stuff like that that's just like these different moments in my life just like kept me wanting to just pursue music man yeah. like just these different little small intricate, intricate things it, it may not be big to some folks but it's like when you walking around and people just kind of like know who you are just call you out i just feel like that's kind of cool i'm like yeah man. <laughs> Can't so, can't beat that. Yeah. Uh, so in your high school and college, uh, like time when you're mm. uh, rapping with this group, what uh, like you guys are trying to do that professionally? Yeah. What yeah. ways did you guys find that uh, worked to like make money or help pay for the dream? So when I was with senior class and we were doing that, um, James at the time kind of like eat. You know, we, we started off, we were cool, the music was good, and then I just think he kind of got into, you know, doing his own thing. And, you know, we we fell off, but, I mean, it's it's, it's all love. But um, I think he pursued more of a, of a professional type of route, whereas mm. my music at the time may not have been to that type of standard, I guess. So, mm. you know, at that time, we were, we were trying to push towards something professional, mm -hmm. but he just went off and do it. He went off and did his own thing, and I kind of did my own thing, and... Um, it really didn't get serious for me after that moment until um, until we, you know, formed the Zoo Gang. And after that, it was just was like, OK, how can I get it on streaming platforms? Yeah. You know, how can I how can I find a way to really like monetize myself and monetize my brand and try to find my lane as an artist? So after after that, it's like, you know, um, from from Zoo Gang, then it just went to myself mm -hmm. and figuring out well, how can I make a name for myself and build a brand off that? So yeah. I would have to say, you know, ever since probably like 2014, I've been trying to pursue this like really professional and just, you know, opening up my own studio. You know, I had my own studio for a moment in um, South Minneapolis oh, wow. over at uh, 116 West Lake Street. I okay. mean, if you guys want to go there, get a haircut, you know, in the basement. Nice. We had a uh, we had a studio and we were there for years, like from like 2017 up until... I want to say probably like 2020. Nice. Oh. Sorry to cut you yeah. off. We have to take a break in 15 seconds. Uh, oh, follow uh, <laughs> follow Half at Half Price Music on Instagram and the other socials, uh, mm -hmm. BeatStars and Spotify and stuff. It's just HVLF. Uh, Dogstar Podcast. Bow Wow. We'll be right back. Bow Wow. Welcome back to Dogstar. We are in the midst of talking to Half about the the early days yeah. and specifically about the studio you used to have on the north side. Yeah, uh, actually on the south. I did, south I did side, have a, excuse yeah, me. I, I had a studio. Actually, we I moved it to the north side. But like the first studio that we opened up, me and my brother, we opened it up at the shop. So we had a studio in the barber shop that we right. just completely just renovated, put our money together, and just said, you know, this is a dream of ours. And, you know, we're all talented, like I said. It's yeah. like, let's just put our money together and just, like, build something just for us. Mm -hmm. So we built that studio there, and it's like, man, that really opened up my eyes. So it's like this progression of things that just happened in the course of my life. And, like, opening up that studio, um, it got me the ability to meet Kobe. Um, it, wow. it got me the ability to meet um, Niles. Um, I don't yeah. know if you're familiar with Niles oh, and his yeah. work. Him and the um, whole yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it, it actually allowed me to meet, um, rest in peace, Mike, uh, Mike Dreams. Mm. Uh -huh. So it's wow. like I got to meet these people in the city, and that was just another, you know, another thing that kind of like opened up my eyes. Like, man, just just keep going, like keep going with this, and just like really pursue it yeah, because on the right track. yeah, you you never really know who you can meet. You never really know what could happen from it if you know you you, you know if you stop. You never really know what could happen. So it's like you might as well just give it a shot. So. We opened up the studio and um, 
it's it was dope, man. Like a lot of good music came up out of there. Like me and my brothers would go down there. We would just create. Wow. If it wasn't us creating, you know, I would have my own studio sessions where different artists would come in, they would record. Yeah. And we would just kind of just rock out from like we would just rock out all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just come out there and just record and just make music. It was it was beautiful. And did you start to offer, you know, uh, beat services, mixing services, oh, sure. mastering service to pay for some of that? Cause oh, yeah. Did, did you guys, like, build it HGTV style, like <laughs> DIY? I mean, kind of. I mean, kind of, yeah. Like, wow. we, we wanted it to be as, like, legit as possible. Like, we didn't want people to just come down there and just say, oh, this is just like a... Uh, a hole in the you know a hole in the wall like yeah, oh you're, you're with recording. the pillows and yeah you know right. how you go to some places like come to my studio and it's like a closet right <laughs> it's like nah we're we're gonna make sure that this is like legit professional because we had some big time clients upstairs getting their haircuts it's like mm. why not kind of say hey you know by the way you know we have a studio downstairs if you want to come and check it out so it, it it worked out perfectly man so it's like some people go upstairs to get their haircut and then they'll come down and record or they will come down there was at one point we. We had a a photo station set up, too. So it's like you can get professional photos done, get a haircut, record a song, shoot a music video. It was like a one-stop shop. Yeah, (laughs) get lined up, lay down, get the video. It it was perfect, man. It it worked out perfectly. And we did that for years. So it was was dope. Out of that same spot before you moved it? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So uh, we moved to the north side, um, I want to say... Probably was like 2020, 2021. Wow. Yeah, 2020, okay, 2021 okay. is when we moved. And uh, it was a much bigger space. And um, it just, it allowed for more flexibility, more security. Um, it was, key. you know, right. You want to, you want to, right. You want to make sure that, you know, artists are, are put in a, in a safe space when they're recording. You know, you don't yeah. ever want to go into a place where, you know, you're, you're unsure of, of what could happen while you're down there. So, man, I, I, I got to meet a lot of people. I actually, um, uh, I got to meet, uh, what is this guy's name? Uh, Top Five. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him too, but like he's come down and recorded songs before. Whoa. So, yeah, <laughs> I've I've met a lot of a lot of a lot of people. And just one could argue, just by coincidentally following your passions, following your dreams. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's that's why I kind of have this 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 thing that I'm going with right now. It's just called keep going. Like that's it's just something that I just feel is. Like, it's, it's a mantra to live by. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you're doing, whatever you... You could be going... We're all going through something, but it's like, as long as you just keep going and just push through it, it's like, you never really know what could happen if you just keep going and find out what's on the other end. So I yeah. I, I just live and die by that phrase, for real. That's, that's great. That's solid, yeah. yeah. And any... I want to rewind a little bit. Yeah, let's do so it. So before the studio... Mm. Your first time rapping on stage. I know this is probably in middle school or high school. Oh no, 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 no. My my first time performing on stage was, man, it was <laughs> after I, high school. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was after high school. And I look back at it, it's like at that time, I thought it was the coolest experience mm. ever because <laughs> it was I, I don't I don't want to say it was like a talent show, but it was like it was like an event where I think like MTV, BT, um, some different labels were all oh, there sick. and it's like it was like a showcase type of thing mm. so all these different artists from like the midwest came together and we had to perform in front of these like a and r's and all these yeah. record executives i don't know how i got up on stage with like you know i thought i was cool with like a leather coat on you know a hat <laughs> you know stage stage presence and like trying to like you know, walking back and forth, you got like, breath control. I didn't know about any of that. Bro. So, like, I'm on stage just drenched in sweat, yeah, just, yeah, like, yeah. still trying to rock it in front of all these people. And, I mean, like, I feel like I did great. But, like, mm. I look back at it, I'm like, man, that was, like, that was a crazy nerve-wracking experience. But that was my first time really getting on stage and performing. Oh and performing in front of A&Rs and record executives. I didn't know what, what could happen from it, but it was like, I'm going to just do it. So we we, nice. we definitely did our thing. It was it was a dope experience for sure. Definitely. But, what do you do to prepare for a live performance now? Probably different wardrobe at least. Oh, uh, man. I think right now, since I haven't really had any recent performances, my, my most recent performance, it could have been Gladiator School. Right. Like, it would have been dope to really do that live instead of, you know, sending in a... A quick video but i haven't really had any performances right now where you know i had to prepare for it. but mm. if i did prepare for it it's like i just want to make sure you know obviously i know the song mm-hmm. you know i don't ever want to get on stage and try to 
You know, you get artists who have the song playing in the background. Mm. Yeah, I, I hate that. So it's like, you know, just make sure you know the lyrics of your songs. Make sure that you got that down packed and breath control, stage presence. Like I said, you just make sure that you could just, you know, rock the crowd. So if, if I'm ever to get a shot at performing, um, that's how I would prepare for it. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any performers locally or internationally that you really admire their stage presence? Man, uh, man, that's a good question. I think, um, like I've seen, I've seen a couple Pusha T shows mm -hmm. and I, I love the way that he gets on stage and, you know, he, you know, pe I feel like a lot of people sleep on Pusha T or, and they don't really like him for some odd reason, but like I've watched a lot of his shows and I feel like he definitely knows how to rock a crowd. I mean, I've seen some, some West Side Gun performances. Mm. I like how he gets, you know, he gets down, um, even like, you know, classics like an MF Doom performance. Like I've watched a few of his performances yeah. where it's like, these are just, you know, it's it's as simple as just engaging with the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be all crazy with, you know, all these new artists that got the flames and right. pyrotechnics and all of that. Yeah, that the kind costumes of like, that they can't move yeah, in. Yeah, it's and, like, yeah. you don't need that, man. You just need to be engaged with the audience. You got good music, just engage with the audience yeah. and just make sure that the music is right. And it's like, just kill it. Definitely. Yeah. And then, sorry to go back again after he did, but uh, what advice would you give to somebody who is, like, trying to build a studio that people feel comfortable in? Because it seems like you guys really hit that on the head. Yeah, <sighs> setting that vibe, Man, and keeping the artist comfortable. It, for me, for sure, you want to make sure that it's, you know, you got the right equipment. Mm. Um, You want to make sure that you have the acoustics right. Because, mm. like... People sleep on acoustics. It's like if you go into a space and the sound is terrible mm -hmm. and, you know, you got the voice bouncing off the of walls and all, you don't have the right sound, you know, uh, padding, you know, all that stuff. You, you need all of that to make sure that the vocals are right. You need the equipment to make sure everything sounds good. You don't need the multi-million dollar, you know, studio equipment like that. But as long as you got some quality equipment, you got the acoustics right, um, a good security system cameras um and a space that you know you could go till like two three four in the morning because a lot of artists they just want to go all hours of the night right. so as long as i think you got those intact like you can have a good definitely a good studio yeah so, and invaluable advice yeah for um, sure we were talking before the last break about uh, just like gearing up and really taking it serious mm -hmm. um what other ways uh for like your artist the artist rapping side of it did you find to like uh like further your career like make money were you guys doing like merch or doing shows or yeah merch for sure um merch and just selling services and selling beats mm. i was like you know th those are the three things man as long as you get like you know you got a site where you have services like yeah. your online presence is there you got merch um, you know, obviously with me, I can just make songs and just post them online. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of Beat Stars. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I was yeah. following you from back in the day, I oh, guess. Okay. I checked it, okay, uh, I clicked the link, yeah, and I was already yeah, following yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, Beat Stars, man, I, I love that because I could just go on there. It's like if I ever just got the itch to just throw something online, I can just sell a beat, and I'm mm -hmm. good, you yeah. know, or sell multiple beats. And it's like all that just goes directly to me. You know, I don't have to worry about a platform taking a percentage of my music. So, right. you know, you get artists who put an album out and they're talking about streams or whatever. A lot of artists aren't really getting paid off streams like that, right. you know, and, and I think that that's something that's not really talked about, you know. So streaming, not so much, but if you have services and merch, you're definitely going to be able to, like, touch some people and, and, and make some money that way for sure. As a producer, do you prefer uh, unlimited licensing or do you prefer to have, uh, you know, uh, more so, uh, people leasing the beat. I mean, I prefer the the full license where mm -hmm. you get everything tracked out. Obviously, that's more money. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if you're just going to do like the short term lease, either or works for me. I mean, I, I, as long as we're able to work out a deal that's comfortable for the artist and myself. Right. That's really the best thing. I, I don't really want any artist that I'm working with to feel uncomfortable. And I mean, it really, at the end of the day, it doesn't even have to be about money. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if it's just an organic relationship, I don't have to pay you for it. You know I mean? We, we don't have, to, it doesn't have to be anything monetary. As long mm -hmm. as like the relationship is good and the music is good, mm -hmm. we can work together. So it, right. yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be about money at the end of the day. 
Right, or upfront yeah. money at least, maybe right. splitting the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know, it, as long as everybody's happy, that, yeah. that's that's how I just like to look at it, man. But like B Star, uh, B Star has definitely been a way for me to like, you know, ma- make some money off of music for sure. Yeah, yeah. N- new beats up just a few months ago, so check that out. H yeah, V L F half. Yeah, some good beats. Yeah. Uh, we. Oh, brain fart. I'm so sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> I was going to ask further about the the first studio space and mm-hmm. just what you ha- were able to learn from that space before you guys moved to the to Man, the Man, I learned a lot. Uh, and that first studio space, you know, I didn't really know how to work with artists. Um, I didn't really know how to... I, and, and what I mean by working with artists, I mean more so working with artists who are actually like they, they have a career or they like right. want to do something with their music. Isn't, part, their, isn't their first time in the studio. Right. It isn't right. their first time in the studio. And like part of that, I was just working with people who were just like, oh, they got one foot in, one foot out. They mm-hmm. didn't really know what they want to do. But like by the time I got to that studio, you know, word got out to a few people where it's like, you know, I want to actually take it serious. So right. at that time, me kind of just starting off and being fresh. You know, I may or I may or may not know that this particular artist wants auto tune, or mm. this particular artist doesn't want auto tune, right. or like um, this particular artist likes his voice to sound wide and big. And you know, uh, working with R and B artists, and singers. I mean, working with a rapper versus working with a singer is it's a totally different session. I suppose um, working with women versus working with men. I mean, it's a different environment completely. You have right. to know how to work in those different environments. And that was something that that studio did for me was, you know, it, it challenged me to say, okay, how can I, how can I get through this? And and how can I learn how to work in these different environments and kind of like, you know, figure it out because earlier on, I didn't know what the heck I was doing, right. but once time went on, I started to educate myself and learn more about how to, you know, work with these different types of artists or work with in these different types of sessions because Every session is different. Yeah. I mean, it, it, every session is not the same. You're not you're not going to go into the studio and just click record and you know, boom, we got we got a song. It, yeah. It's never like that. So earlier on, I didn't know that. I thought it was as easy as that. I mm-hmm. thought it was as easy as just okay, you booked five to seven. Let's click record. You got the song. Okay, cool. We'll just record it, and you you just pay me for my couple of hours. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, time's up. Get out of here. It's not like right. that, man. It's it's not. I mean, every session is different. You know, everybody's different. Um, everybody's voice is different. You have to learn about how people sing, how people rap, how people sound on the mic. It's it's different. You have to have an ear if you're ever going to try to get behind the boards and be a be an engineer or be a producer or be somebody who's yeah. you know a recording engineer. It's completely different than just being an artist because mm, the artist right. we kind of have it easy where we could just just like i'm gonna put my rhymes together and i'm gonna get in i'm gonna record it whereas like the engineer producer perspective of it, it's like okay i need to take this idea from the artist and make it sound as best as possible for them make it sound mm. amazing for them so or make it sound like they hear it in their head yeah as yeah. close to right. it as possible exactly there, there's sometimes that isn't possible yeah there's that i mean man earlier on i, I had a couple of sessions where i felt like the people didn't come back because they may have thought it didn't sound that great and it's oh. like <laughs> You, you, you kind of have to roll with those punches and, yeah. and you learn from those situations where it's like, dang, I know I could have did better. But um, it's, it's got me to a point where it's like I've learned from it mm-hmm. and I've gotten to work with other engineers who have come back to me. It's like, man, I love what you did. You know, I, I really appreciate And I, I man, that that kind of like it, it, it's, it's reassurance that I need. Yeah. Where it's like, man, you you figured it out. You know, when you get that to that point where it's like the artist comes back and they're like, man, you know, thank you this sounds great or this beat sounds, you know, you get the comments, man, this beat sounds crazy mm. or, you know, fire. And then they actually hit me back up and like, man, we need to collab or we need to work. So that's huge. Yeah. Going from that is, is definitely growth for real. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I guess. So we've only got like two and a half minutes before the break. So I don't want to get into oh, yeah. anything or, too deep. Yeah, I mean, good. we got to talk. It'd be a good spoiler. Yeah. Uh, so we, I don't even know. Why, why'd you uh, <laughs> want to move to LA? Cause you live in LA now, right? Yeah. So LA, I felt like is, I felt like at the time for me, LA was an opportunity for me to like branch out and just be able to take my brand to a different level. I felt like I wanted to network with other people, other different artists, mm-hmm. you know, learn more about the music business. Um, you know, when you're here in Minnesota and you've been here all your life, Minnesota is all you know, the, right, the right. you know, the, the sounds, you know, the streets, you know, everything is just kind of like the same. You kind of just, you're, you're, 
I don't necessarily say complacent, but you just you kind of get comfortable, mm. you know, in a way. And I just felt like, you know, it, it was either going to be um, Las Vegas or uh, L.A. And mm. I just kind of was like, I'm just going to go to L.A. It's one of the biggest music spots in the nation. You know, even I had even thought about Miami at one point, too, but okay. I don't really like Florida. So right. it's, like, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot to take in when you've lived in a place all of your life and you want to be able to take your music to the next level. And, you know, why not give yourself, you know, a shot, you know, take a risk. Um, a lot of artists, I feel like, need to take more risks. And mm. being yeah. from here, living here all my life, L.A. was just like a big opportunity, also a big risk for me. So why not see what could come from it? It, it could be the best decision of my life, but I'm not going to make it the worst decision of my life. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, it definitely seems like you're the type to learn from the actual experience. Yeah. Like yeah, you're, I, You can't settle for just seeing somebody else talk about it. It's like you, Yeah, I, I'm the type to just go and do it, man. I, I, I set goals and I just try to just hit it. Like, let's, let's just go and do it. I don't really like sitting around and like waiting for stuff, which is probably why I'm a producer and an artist. I don't like to, <laughs> you know, if I, I I hate to be that artist, like, man, I'm waiting on this beat from right. this producer for X amount of days. It's like, man, I I set something out and I just go for it. Like, if it's something I got to do, let's let's just do it instead of waiting around. <laughs> Words of wisdom with half here on Dogstar. We got to take a break in just a few seconds, but make sure you follow him on all social media at Half Price Music, correct? Yep. Yep. Half, yep. Yep. Half Price Music Group dot com. Also check out. Yes, please. Because that's like the hub. All for the services. Yeah, for yeah. Everything. He's got a bunch of music videos uh, by <laughs> Matt Wells up on YouTube. Yep. Follow us, Dogstar Podcast. We'll be right back. Bow wow. Welcome back to Dogstar. We are concluding our great conversation here with Half. With, um, I mean, we're going to dive into these two tracks, but we were talking yeah. about uh, LA during the break and. Mm. You know, the big the big differences, kind of the complacency some people may feel in, in and not necessarily specifically in Minnesota, but just in the same place they've spent their whole life. Right, so right, right. Yeah. Getting that perspective opened a little bit. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like moving out to LA definitely like opened up my eyes to like a just different environment, different people, just different networking opportunities. So it's definitely been dope living out in, uh, in LA right now. Well, we appreciate you not forgetting about uh, your humble oh, beginning. No, no, no. Yes. Man, uh, I love Minnesota. Minnesota is always home at the end of the day. Always going to be my my home. <laughs> Very good. That's what we like to hear. Uh, so before you moved out there, though, you dropped uh, one nine, of yep. course, because yep. that was back in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, were those, what was going on in your life when you made those songs? Yeah, what's the inspiration behind that? Yeah, so one night uh, definitely was just me just having fun. Um, a little bit of just not, you know, a little bit of experimenting, but at the same time, it was just me having fun. But um, also kind of kind of breaking out my shell a little bit. You know, it, it, I felt like one nine was, you know, my my biggest release. I mean, I have released a project prior to that, mm -hmm. um, several projects that, you know, people probably don't even know about, but... I think one nine was like my biggest break. I would have to say that was like my my entryway into just you know learning more about the Minneapolis local artists and just learning about the the scene here and being yeah. able to you know branch out and just work with people like K Tones and working with people like Kobe. So okay. that was my opportunity to to get out on the scene was one nine. So I had fun with that project. Where did you produce that whole project? Yep. Produced the whole thing, mix yeah. and mastered it. Um, all of, even all ask. original. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every, <laughs> everything I do is just me, man. I, I produce everything, write everything. Um, it's just all me. In regards to distribution or representation, I wanted to talk briefly about Sick Dozen Records. I saw that uh, your most recent album is not uh, released by them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six Most doesn't. Those, yeah. yeah, yeah. Six doesn't. At the end of the day, is you know that's my family. Yeah. Um, mm. at, at that time, um, six doesn't was uh, we were kind of building a record label at that time, mm -hmm. and you know we still kind of are at the end of the day. I mean, six doesn't will never die. Um, that's like I said, that's my family, yeah. and we're we're still going to keep going. But um, this one, I just changed it up. I mean, it's still half price music is still under six dozen. Okay, okay. So I mean, it's no no difference. There's no no change. Just maybe a change in name on the back, right. but still at the end of the day, like half price music is still a business underneath six dozen. Okay, fascinating. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, I wanted to wanted to clarify that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, three years later, <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah. You, you dropped the most recent project, and then we got uh, two tracks from you today. Yeah. That's uh, Only Time Will Tell, if you don't know. Yeah, Only Time uh, Will Tell, yeah. Yeah, the two tracks, Enclosed mm-hmm. and that's Balanced. The, yeah, that's the fourth track and the 11th track. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Only, only Time Will Tell, um, for, for that project, man, I was going through a lot. I mean, if, if you listen to that project, that, that project was like therapy for me. <laughs> I mean, there's some heavy um, stuff you talk about. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, we don't got to go in too much detail of everything. Whatever you're like, comfortable with. Yeah, you know, I, I went through a lot. We, we all go through some things, but, you know, I, I kind of went through a hell of a lot uh, making that project. So um, that was definitely like a project where it was like a release. Mm. Um, wow. it, it, it felt it felt so good releasing that album because so much time was put into that. So much thought, so much, so much like work, um, long, countless long nights, just staying up late as hell, just putting everything I could into, you know, these songs. I mean, the, the version that people are hearing, the version that's out on streaming platforms is not even really the original version. I mean, there's probably like three versions to this album. So there's, there's so many songs that, you know, I had to pick through in order to make this. I mean, obviously you can see the last one was done with 2019 and then three years later, I mean, a lot of stuff had happened personally in my life, mm-hmm. but I just wanted to put, like I said, so much time and effort into this where it's like, I, you know, I'm at the end, I'm kind of a perfectionist. Right. <laughs> so that, that kind of held things up too. But like I said, I just wanted to put my all into this project and like it released and it felt so good. It felt so good to put it out. Yeah, that yeah. level of dedication is definitely apparent. Yeah, I'm I'm very I'm an advocate for quality over quantity. It's like mm-hmm. I don't want to just put some BS out and just say, hey y'all, here, here goes a project where it's like, I could have done that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I could have done that easily, but yeah. I think it's better to put out quality music and have something that's long lasting than just you know some stuff you just want to put out. Just say hey, I'm an artist. You know, here I do music type. You know, I I rather just put out something that means something that's meaningful totally yeah. mm. and when you look back on it are you still you know look how do you if you listen to your own music oh i listen to my music all the time <laughs> okay man. good like, I, I love I'm, when artists I, I'm do my that. own biggest fan i feel like and when you look pat when you look back on only time will tell when you listen to back do you feel those uh same emotions or is it like look how much i've grown and it's almost man a, i feel every emotion like from <laughs> start to finish like the way that the tracks go, like yeah, it, it's sequence. a specific, it's a specific flow. That there's there's a reason why every song is placed like how it is. So, it's like every time I listen to it, it's like man, I'm 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 taking myself on a ride. So I I, I love it. I love listening to my my own music. Is there a reason uh, why Balance was the first track to get a music video? Well, actually, God's Hands oh, was the... Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, that, that God's Hands was the first video that I put out to kind of, like, roll out the album. Right, um, right, right. Now, that song, that was dope to put that out and be on Golden Valley and uh, Penn right at Wally's. I, I hadn't really seen another artist go out on that in that area, in that yeah. environment, because it's a little sketch. It's, it's, you know, it's a little rough around the edges, but I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's still my neighborhood where I grew up from, mm-hmm. you know, goes back to one nine. Like I'm, I'm from that, that area. I'm from North side. So it's like that video was, you know, me just kind of going back to my roots and just saying, you know, here, here, here it goes. Like, this is the beginning to this big album that I wanted to put out. Like this is the, this, that was the first single that I put out for that, uh, for that project. But, uh, balance, that was, um, that actually was like the third video. Oh, whoa. <laughs> but all yeah. of them Matt Wells, right? Yep. How'd, yep. You, um, how'd you link up with them? All, all of my videos, well, the majority of them were Matt Wells. Minus Polito. Yeah, Polito. For conversations. Yeah, shout out Polito. Yeah, uh, Polito and Matt, man, both just great videographers. Definitely. And they're they're doing their thing. I, I love working with them. But um, Matt Wells did all the videos for this project. Wow. And man, he is a, he's a, he's a great dude. Like he is, he is really a great guy to work with. And I, I like that where you can work with people who it feels organic. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't like it to be such a transactional type thing where it's like, I can actually talk to him and be like, you know, Hey, you know, how's it going? So, Mm -hmm. um, making those videos were awesome. Like I I loved it. It was fun. God's hands was fun. My mom was in it. Um, Shout out mom. (laughs) She got to uh, have a, a part in there because, you know, there's a line about her. That like mm. that that song God's Hands is 
is very personal and it was written after a very traumatic experience in my life. So God's Hands is like, that's very close to me. It's a personal song. So that was the reason why that was like the rollout. That was like the first song that got put out for the album. Uh, what was that trauma, if you feel comfortable talking about it? Oh uh, man, I kind of don't. I kind of don't want to go too deep into it. No just worries. It's like it's it's bad, man. I, I'm I'm just glad that you know I was able to you know survive and you know get through it, and you know I'm I'm still here today. So if if you kind of get my trip, yeah, um, we're, so, we're we're grateful yeah. that you're here, standing, sitting <laughs> yeah, there with yeah, us before yeah. us. Just just glad to be here and just you know be living life and just still keep doing going, music. Yeah. yeah, keep going. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So you, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think there's something about uh, having your lyrics over one of your beats that like helps you, or that's like feels, I don't know how like to say Like makes the song more powerful or meaningful? Um, or are yes. you able to express yourself better when you mm -hmm. make a song with lyrics versus a song or versus a beat for another artist? Um, both. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm able to express myself when I make my beats and nice. when I'm, you know, writing rhymes and just, you know, making songs and just being the artist. Um, it, it goes both sides for me. Like I, I'm able to express myself, but I feel like I'm probably, I could probably more so express myself actually speaking. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I guess I give it more towards being the artistry side of it, mm -hmm. just actually having the vocals down. But both sides, I'm able to express for sure. And so we're gonna play enclosed first, and then yeah. balance second, kind of do it chronologically. Yeah, yeah, let's, what let's what do would it. you say is the the perfect mood or the perfect day of the week and time to play enclosed? What would you recommend? I mean, granted, you should listen to the album in its yeah, entirety from right. front to start, yeah, from yeah, start yeah. to back. But enclosed, I would say, you know, it, it's definitely like a nighttime. You know, mm. nighttime. You know, kind of after seven or eight p.m. You yeah. know, sun kind of setting. It's, it's one of those, it's one of those type of like vibes. Time, but you know, you want to. You want to kind of chill out a little bit. Unwind. Um, yeah, unwind a little bit. Um, you know, the, the the song was written, it's called Enclosed for a reason, like a letter. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a letter to my old oh. self in a way. Okay, wow. So it's it's one of those like vibe type songs, you know, chill out, you know, unwind a little bit and listen to un Enclosed and, you know, li listen to a story, you know? Mm. Yeah. Okay, what about for balance? I mean, yeah. if they haven't man. seen the music video yeah. yet, I they should balance. be. Yeah, I love balance, man. Balance is like a feel good, you know, you at the end of the day, man, we we want to celebrate ourselves. You know, we're, we 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 have jobs, you know, what whether you're, you know, an employee or whether you're a boss. Mm -hmm. It's like at the end of the day, we want to, you know, work and feel good at it. You know, it's 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 a feel good song, you know, it's it's talking about the the bosses and all of us. You know, if if you want to go out there and, and succeed, you also you have to work hard. But what goes along with working hard is like you kind of have to have a balance of you know your personal life, things that you got to handle on the other end. But it's like real bosses are just gonna play that and just celebrate themselves. At the end of the day, it's like it's it's like an anthem to me. I feel yeah. like for, for the people that are actually going out and getting it. That's what I. That's that's how I. That's how I wrote the song. That's what I was envisioning writing it. That's oh, nice. wow. That's yeah. I, we always love getting from the writer exactly. themselves. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, at it's, least it's, their interpretation. Yeah, you know? it's, it, it's an anthem for the bosses. Yeah, that's great. Why do you uh, like? How do certain songs get picked to have a music video? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I feel like, well, obviously, like because God's hands was just so personal for me, like I had to put that out. Um, only time will tell. That was also the the intro to the album that had a video. It was another personal one. But then after those two videos, I felt like, man, I gotta like, I gotta do something with more some energy. You know, mm -hmm. when you watch Balance, the sun is out. You know, I, I'm kind of just out on a rooftop, just just feeling it. You know, yeah. just you know, you you like I said, you turn that on. It, it's a feel good anthem type. So with uh, with Balance and then Pressure. Um, pressure, I kind of wanted to just break out a little bit. Like I, I just kind of wanted to just, you know, sometimes you got to have those songs where you just kind of, you know, you, you, you're feeling it, yeah. you know, it's like, I, I really don't care about, I don't really don't care about nothing. You know, I, I'm a just, it, this is easy to me. You know, it, it goes along with the song pressure. Like this is, this is no pressure to me, like making music, doing what I want to do. It, it comes off effortless. So I, I, I really can't say Every song to me deserves a video, but like mm -hmm. I specifically picked those songs just because like 
that's just how I was feeling at the time. I, I was just going with the feeling. So well, nice. we check yeah. all those out. Yeah, definitely. We really yeah. appreciate you coming through and sitting down with us, sitting oh, down with yeah. your fans. I appreciate and... the time. I appreciate y'all allowing me to get out here and speak. It was so. our pleasure. These two songs are about to be enclosed and then balance. This is half. This is Dog Star. Bye wow. I do this for the glory, not honorable mentions. Bro said it's a marathon to this road to riches. I'm not trying to fall short like it's fourth and inches. I know that feeling, being broke is the worstest of sickness. That's why I flip through these bills and bars like a gymnast. The weight bearing on my shoulders, I work it like fitness. Been bigging up the muscle, the flex game tremendous. Trust me when I say I did them both through a pandemic. Beaming and bends, and whenever I think about it, the feeling is real ridiculous. Never mind material trinkets. They never made me and they never will. Keep moving forward like Pirelli wheels. People like you more when you don't have it and once you have it. They act like you always had it. Never knew what it really took to even get here. A lot of no's and who will use. Friends turn to foes, some didn't see it through. Believed in myself. I had to show and prove. You again couldn't walk a mile in my shoes. Wouldn't know the half. I had to ink that shit and tattoo. Every move calculated, they still gon' judge you. Even if you at the top, they still won't love you. Spoken to existence and still more I gotta do. Damn, checking off goals and cutting off actors who didn't play their roles. Shout out to my bro, look, this here is for those Ever since he came back, I swear I've been in album mode Had to drop God's hands just to let the city know I was in a dark place, I had to let my aura glow Blood running down my face, I couldn't let my sorrow so Took a minute to myself, I had to go and heal my soul Flights to the west coast, if you know then you know And I know that she know, love for my team, I stick to the code This loyalty I uphold, it returns tenfold, look For they self, it's a hell of a feeling when you pay in yourself. If it ain't about business, then you play in yourself. I tell a bitch, quit playing and play your position. If you take from my cut, then you end up with stitches. My plan is clear cut, case you didn't get the picture. I crop out you, so again, who didn't get the vision? Add up this bread, multiply it, get richer. Rebrand it, then I redesign. redesign. Bought out even over time. over time. Understand that even unsigned better than most of these looking who sign. Been that way since the 98 Nissan. Nissan Real bosses in the room and you absent Yeah, we back in, uh, back in Look, all I know is grind, no distractions I see a mouth move, no actions I gotta get to this bag, never stagnant Getting money in the front and the back end Yeah, the front and the back end both sides of the scale keeping balance If time money I'm moving in clockwise Fear no man my only fear is it's idle time Devil keep watching he playing with idle minds That's why I double my work ethic I'm doing two a day Stack it up flip it and save that for a rainy day Couple bank accounts doing numbers even my IRA All that flosses this shit you doing boy that's cliche Real bosses moving silence that's what Nip say Nightmares losing everything boost my adrenaline Why you think I work so hard for all these Benjamins Snakes in the grass slithering they bites venomous Keep my circle tight cut the bull to a minimum Look, real bosses in the room and you absent yeah we back in uh, back in look all i know is grind no distractions i see a mouth move no actions i gotta get to this bag never stagnant getting money in the front and the back end yeah the front and the back end both sides of the scale keeping balance